roots, tubers, rhizomes, corms. What's the difference? We're gonna find out with Deb Marr, and Deb is an associate professor in the biology department at IU South Bend, and a plant enthusiast, a botanist, and you've got a spread for us. We are gonna learn all about different kinds of roots, right? Yeah. I'm excited, so. Yeah. I'm ex so excited to go underground, and we're gonna go underground in several different ways. So. Okay, well, I guess we should talk about, you've got a little, looks like a little tulip tree sap. I have a little tulip tree, so this is our With state tree. And I just wanted to go over the basic, uh, so the root structure, and then we have the stem, which is normally above ground. And a couple things that I want you to notice about the roots. So roots have a different structure than stems. Mm -hmm. So in the roots at the tips, they have root caps that allow them to sense their environment, move through the soil. And also if we cut through the roots, um, the vascular tissue, so the xylem and phloem, how they carry water and nutrients through the plant is different. Wow. If we go above ground, notice that in the stem, we have this pattern of no leaves, leaf, no leaves, so we call that internode, node, internode. And so all stems have this pattern of leaf, period of no leaf, leaf, no leaf. So node, internode, and so forth. Okay. And so even though um, you can have things growing underground, but they can actually be stems that grow underground. Oh, which we're going to get into, right? Yes. Okay, awesome. So what we have here... Yeah, we got an assortment here. These so are... Looks like veggies, right? I got a lot of veggies. Mostly veggies, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So these are all roots. Okay. And they're roots that are modified for storage. Yeah. So this is cassava. Sometimes people also call it yucca root mm -hmm. or uh, uh, manioc. And so it, cassava, so this is a root. And it's a root because it doesn't have any leaves. There are no leaves that are going to come out of this root. Okay, okay. But it's storing. It's, it's storing, storing what, carbohydrates. Starch, okay, starch so sugars. this would be okay. a root tuber. Okay, all right, great. And then we might be familiar with sweet potatoes. That's the or biggest yams. sweet potato yeah, I've It's ever a beautiful seen. <laughs> sweet potato. Uh, so this is also a root. Yep. And it's also a root tuber, so it's storing carbohydrates. Uh huh. And then this is daikon, so this is a Japanese radish. Okay. And this is a root, and you can see it actually has roots coming out. Like little of rootlets, it. right? Yeah. Okay. And then the leaves are coming out. Would the come top. out here off of the top. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay, but then what about something like this, like a beet, right? So a beet, this is also a root. So basically it's a taproot that's been modified, but it's the upper part of the taproot. And then if it, so when it got picked, the bottom part of the root was kind of picked off. Would be off of here. If we put the tulip oh, yeah. tree, it would kind of look a little look bit like, like that. that. Right? Okay, um, gotcha. So the okay. upper part of the root has been modified for storage, but okay. that's a root. And okay. notice that the leaves are coming from the top. From the top, okay. Yeah. Now this looks to me like a dandelion, right? This is a dandelion. Okay. So again, I see a big fleshy part here. Yep. Also storage. Yep. So this is a tap root for storage. Um, and then it also has finer roots that are coming out the side, and you can see the leaves are above ground. Okay, so lots yeah. of different, and of course this is one where even if you if you pull out the dandelion, you leave a little speck of root. It can come right back, it, it'll grow. and this fleshy part, this allows it to stay underground over winter and then come right up in the spring. It's ah. one of our first flowering plants It is, it comes right up, okay, yeah. all right. Now here's a couple that folks might have in their refrigerator. Looks like a carrot. And a parsnip? Yes. Okay. And so are those so, different? So they are actually, they're both roots. Yeah. Um, the nice thing about these is we can actually see, if I, I'll grab this. Okay. Oh, you're going to slice one open, I'll right? slice open. Okay. So one of the nice things about parsnips is that you can, when you cut it in half, and I can do this both oh, with yeah, yeah, a yeah. carrot. I see rings, right? you can get a sense of how the root structure is different. So I mentioned there's some differences like the root cap going through. Mm -hmm. So this kind of shows nicely the root and the inner part is where the vascular tissue is. So that's okay. where the xylem and phloem carrying water and nutrients and carbohydrates is in the center. Okay. Whereas this is just generalized, in this case, storage. Okay, okay. And this is a parsnip that's been stained with iodine. With iodine, like this. So basically what you did is you made a slice and then you just dropped some iodine yeah. onto it. Yeah, okay. and that iodine stains starch purple. Ah, so you can see the okay. cortex 
is showing that color there and you can see that inner ring it makes it a little bit more obvious to see that that inner ring is different. It is. So one of the cool things about roots, they're really, really specific. They sense their environment. Those root caps actually have sensors that allow them to kind of sense their environment as they're going That's through the amazing. soil. Yeah. And they don't just let anything go into the plant. So only water, highly specialized nutrients and so forth. But if you have a fungus that's trying to get in there, it has to have that fungus, if it's gonna cause disease, it can't just get straight into that center. Oh, so the, okay. So that center strip mm -hmm. here is highly specialized. It only allows certain things into like the plant. It's a gatekeeper, right? It's a gatekeeper. Mm, okay, um, fascinating. And so, yeah, so when and you look at tap that's, roots. That's the case too in a carrot, is it? In a carrot, yeah. It's so a if you little think harder about to a, see. It's harder to see orange against orange, but the, the I, center is a little bit darker yep, orange. I see that, yep. And when you eat it, it the it, outside is a little softer, it, the inside the is woodier. Yeah, texture is different. Wow, okay. Something we don't think about when we bite into a carrot or a parsnip, right? Yeah. That's awesome. So that gives you a sense of root structure. All roots, okay. So here in the courtyard, you have a whole other table that we're gonna walk over to with different kinds of root structures. So yeah. let's walk over there. Let's go right. see what you got, because there's more things. Oh, I love this pretty fern. That's so this entire table is underground stems. So we're still underground, right? but everything here is a stem of some kind. Okay. So we'll start. So not, that means not technically a root. Not, not a root. We're not really a root. We're not but doing roots. But uh, underground. Okay. Underground Got it. stems. Okay. All right. So remember, we said that stems have leaves, mm -hmm. and this fern is a nice example. This is a rabbit foot fern, yeah. and you can see the rhizomes. So this is a underground stem that grows along the ground, or sometimes actually underground. And with this rhizome, you can see on the top side of the rhizome, you have leaves coming, coming up. Out. Yep. And then on the underside, it will have roots going down. Okay. So rhizomes okay. are stems that grow along the ground. Leaves go up, up. Mm -hmm. roots go down. Okay, so even though you said rhizomes um, can be underground, they're not always underground. Sometimes they're just along, along the ground. Along the surface of the ground. And then, of course, this one's in a pot, so. Okay. Yeah, so okay. this one, and if we were to dig it out, you would see the roots going, going down. down. Okay, great. Rabbit's and you can foot. see that actually with the mint too, and I can pick this up. So mints are kind of similar. So they've got um, roots that are going down mm -hmm. into the ground, but this is a rhizome. Yep. And you can see from that rhizome, every so often we've got leaves that right. are coming up. And that's of course why mint is such an amazing spreader, right? Yes. If you have it in your garden, it grows It just everywhere. grows all over. Yep. And these are kind of underground right at the surface. This one actually looks a little green, right? So even yeah. though it might be underground, it's like still photosynthetic, Yeah, they're right? popping up. Yeah, okay. Cool. All right, mint. So All right. that's Good. rhizome. Okay. Now over here you got this. I love this bucket of potatoes. Yes. Right. Potatoes are fabulous. Yeah. So with a potato, we'll start with this one. Okay. I have one that looks like that in my refrigerator. Yeah. <laughs> this is from my compost pile. Perfect. Uh, so we have roots that are going down. Yeah. So potato has roots. Yeah. But then it also has these rhizomes. So it has these stems that are underground, and these stems give rise to shoots, so leaves, yep. and then some of them end in tubers, so storage organs. So wow, this is a okay. stem tuber, whereas <sighs> over there we had root, root tubers, tubers that were actually roots. Okay, so two different kinds of tubers. Yeah. All right. So with the potato, and maybe we can see it, this is a larger potato plant. Okay, so this is the whole plant. Yeah. So this is what is above ground, the leaves. Yep. So of those course, are the leaves above ground. End so. of season, withering a little bit, and then when you dig them up, right? We've this got is the, the roots, but then we have the rhizomes that are ending in tubers, tubers stem root, tubers. Root. Okay. Stem and tubers, we know yeah. it's a stem tuber because each of those eyes can give rise to a shoot, a shoot and above and then ground. And things. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. But this is all underground. Yes. And then this is the top. So basically yeah. when you dig potatoes, you get this whole little bu bundle of all those sweet potatoes. That's yeah. wonderful. So potatoes okay. are a nice example. Roots, rhizomes, rhizomes, stem tubers. Yeah. Like it's all going on there. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. You actually have, is that like a little onion too in there? Yeah, so I've got, so these are, uh, this is a native onion. Um, hmm. So it's a nodding onion. Oh yeah. And so this is a bulb. 
Okay, different. Yeah. Right. So we can go to bulbs. So Let's we've got go roots. Bulbs. Yes, I see that. And this is this is underground. So this is an underground bulb. And bulbs are um, stems that have been modified so the stem is squashed. Okay. And it's probably easiest to see it if we cut open a red onion. We've it's got, got the roots. roots. And then if I were to plant it in the ground, the shoots would come up this way. And mm -hmm. I'm going to cut it longitudinally. And so now we can see the inside of the uh, red onion. This is the stem. So the stem is really compressed. Oh, compressed. Really it's a little squashed. disc okay, yeah. at the bottom. Yeah. And out of that disc, we have all these fleshy leaves. So a bulb is a compressed stem with layers of fleshy leaves coming out on either side. And you can see this middle shoot that if I were to allow it to give it a little bit of water and light, yeah. that shoot would emerge oh, out yeah. the top. Okay. All right, that's amazing. So literally, all of these are uh, leaf. specialized leaf. Yeah, so they're specialized for carbohydrate storage, storage so a little also. bit of sugars. Yeah, it's fascinating that plants have come up with all these different ways to store yeah. their own food, essentially. Right? And humans take great advantage, great advantage of that. <laughs> Red yeah. onions and potatoes and daikon and all that great stuff. Okay. And so we can see that. So now, as if we're thinking about planting ahead for the spring, uh, we might be thinking about planting tulip bulbs or daffodils um, and tulip if we cut open that so I'm gonna cut. again a bulb right it's a bulb mm -hmm. and when I cut it open oh yeah same setup. same structure yeah so, yep. different plant yep. different plant species but it's got that little stem mm -hmm. and then fleshy leaves yeah around yep. either side okay so a bulb is compressed stem with fleshy leaves. Okay, great. And that's things like crocus. So I see so them. yeah. So daffodils and tulips have that. So daffodils are a little bit more papery, oh, but the okay. same kind of. It's it's a bulb. Okay. Yep. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, I see what you're saying. These are like thinner. The leaves look thinner. Here, yeah, they're right? a little bit thinner mm -hmm. towards the but outside. But the same basic structure. It's the structure. same structure. Yeah. These are all bulbs. Those are bulbs. And this native. A nodding onion, same structure. same structure. It's a bulb. Okay. So that's a bulb. All right. But that means th some of those over there are yeah. not bulbs? They're not bulbs. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Here, I'm going yeah, yeah, yeah. to slide over here. So here, so I'm going to put the bulbs here. So these are corms. Okay. Garlic S yep. and taro. Oh, taro root, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Taro root, but it's not really taro a root. root. It's a corm. It's an underground stem. Okay. So let's look at crocus. So a corm is similar to a bulb, but when I cut it open, notice that it's solid. Yeah. No little leaf shapes. There's no in there. leaves. Okay. Uh, now in garlic, you can get garlic is mostly solid, so I'm yep. going to try out those one of these. One clove, right? Yep, this yeah. one's pretty tight. And I can see on the bottom, that's where the roots the would The roots would be. come out there, the, the leaves shoots. would be here. And each one of these, oh, <laughs> really. that's a big one. Yeah, these are super tight. And all this papery stuff that you're peeling off is Are thin leaves. Thin leaves, basically, yeah. okay. So a corm they have dried. is, They've and dried. The, you can see this actually pretty well in the crocus. It has thin leaves on yep. the outside. Yep. And then a solid, solid. tissue. Yep. So it doesn't have those concentric leaves not, coming right? out of the stem there. Okay, this is the, the toughest garlic. I know. I should have. There we go. I got Perfect. it. Perfect. All right. So if we cut open a garlic clove, clove. You'll know it's solid. Yeah. Right. So if like anybody it, that's minced garlic in their kitchen. Yeah. Yep. So you can see that central shoot. Yep. That's going to come up, but basically it's solid. Right. So so a corm is solid underground stem, mm -hmm. highly compressed. It might have a few leaves, but it's not, not like multiple those. leaves like a bulb. Okay. Yep. So it's more solid tissue. Okay. All right. So garlic and, and crocus, crocus and then and taro. taro. This is pretty hard. Oh yeah. But you can see solid. It's solid. It's like chunky. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. That's fascinating. So the corms. Corms. Okay. Now over here you've got like some oddballs. Yes. Right? Well, so some of these are just 
So oh, yeah. iris. Oh yeah, iris. So this is a rhizome. Mm -hmm. um, and then goldenrod. Oh yeah. So if we look at the base of goldenrod, it has the roots that are growing down, but it has the rhizomes. And you can see it's sending out rhizomes this way and then shoots that are going to go up. Up from it. Yep. Okay. Again, that also so, helps it make colonies yes. of so if goldenrod got, in this you case. You can't just have a little bit of common no, goldenrod. No, no, you have a lot really, of common goldenrod. You golden have a rod. lot of common goldenrod, like the mint, right? Kind of the same yeah. thing. So, okay. So We're, if we get into maybe some of the specialized. specialized? Yeah, let's so take a look. Do more. So mostly roots are carrying water and nutrients. Right. But they can do other things, and they can do some other things that are really cool. All so right. we got over here. Let's start with corn. We're in Indiana. Oh yeah, we're in Indiana. Okay. okay. So here's corn. Yep. Um, so corn, if you look at the base of corn, it has prop roots. Yeah. So in this case, it has above ground roots that are serving as structure. Because okay. it's a really tall plant, it's mm -hmm. windy, it would yep. fall over. So those prop roots are adding structural stability okay. like to the struts. corn plant. Kind of like yeah. struts, right? Yeah. Okay. So in this case, it's so it, of course it has roots that are going down, down that right. are going to be pulling up the water and nutrients, but then it also has structural stability with the prop Just roots. Just holds it in place. Okay. Now, so this is a plant grown in soil, terrestrial plant. Yeah. Now we're going to go high up in the trees. We're now yeah, in the yeah. tropics. I think most people don't realize orchids grow in trees. So right? most orchids are tr are epiphytic. There's a few that are terrestrial. Right, and we should explain. Epiphytic yes. means oh, epiphytic growing in the branches of trees. Right, right. So this is a dendrobium orchid, mm -hmm. mostly most commonly found high up in the canopy, yeah. in yeah. the branches. Right. And in so the wild, when it's in, in the, the wild. When, when it's in, in the, the wild. wild, right. Yeah. Yep, okay. Yeah. This one's and in the greenhouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this but, is, I see all little like root-like things in there yeah. in the pot. So it has, so it's high up in the branches. So it has roots that are going to be hanging on to the branch. Mm -hmm. But it also has aerial roots. Yep. And these aerial roots, I don't know if you can see that they're green. Yeah, they are green. So when you're living high up in the canopy, you have a couple of problems. You have to catch the water as it comes down. You also have to catch nutrients as they come down really ah, quickly. Okay. So these roots, you have roots that are structural, hanging it onto the branch, Gripping the tree. but then we also have aerial roots that come up. So when you have good water conditions, those roots green up pretty fast and they photosynthesize. So, ah, a little, so most okay. roots don't photosynthesize. Right. But aerial roots can photosynthesize under the right conditions. And this is not the same as a rhizome. This is not a rhizome. Okay, because it's so not structurally, sending up shoots. So actually, if I were to look at this, it would have a root cap. Okay. If I were to cut it open, it wouldn't give rise to leaves yep. and shoots. I get it. Okay. So structurally, it's going to look like a root. Okay. And the other cool thing is they're looking at all the microbes that are associated with them, and they've found cyanobacteria living inside of these roots. Oh, wow. And these cyanobacteria can capture nitrogen. Oh, so my. we have a lot of nitrogen in the air, mm -hmm. but it's not available to plants. Yep. And so these cyanobacteria can capture that nitrogen That's in amazing. these roots and then fix it for nitrogen. Because if you're living up in a canopy, getting nutrients, getting water, it's big a big problem. deal. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not just so the roots are a big part of how they deal with that, but it's also all their partnerships with microbes That's fascinating. that make it possible. Wow. That's fascinating. Okay. So obviously, lots of different kinds of roots and shoots and tubers. And next time I go to the produce section in the grocery store, I got a lot to think about. So um, any last things that you want to share with us before we? I think we're good. We just need to remember roots have a different structure than stems. stems yep. And stems always have leaves and then sections that don't produce leaves. OK. Great. And, and roots are fascinating. They are so fascinating. And thank you so much, Deb, for sharing all this fascinating knowledge and information about all these different structures and what they do for plants. It's amazing. My pleasure. Tons of fun. Lots of fun. Remember, you can find your own outdoor elements when you visit area parks and natural areas. We'll see you soon.